In this experiment, what we're going to do is count the frequency of each codon in human DNA. There are 64 different codons in human DNA and we're going to be counting the frequency of occurrence of each one. We won't be looking at the whole of human DNA, we're just going to be looking at chromosome 1 of human DNA, which has about 250 million letters. The software is able to scan the letters at a rate of about 400,000 letters per second, so it will take about 10 minutes to complete the, the scan of chromosome 1. So here goes. Here you can see the 64 different codons and I've split them into two columns so that the second codon is the reverse and complement of the first column. For example, um, the first column says TTC and the reverse of that would be CTT and the complement of CTT is GAA and so on. So we say that the second column is the reverse complement of the first column and here you can see the frequencies of each codon written next to it um, which is currently being um, counted and here we see the ratio of any codon to its reverse complement shown here. The first thing you'll notice is that even though we've only just started the process of scanning the chromosome, already all of the ratios are very close to one. So even over short sections of DNA, the ratio of the frequency of any codon corresponds to the ratio corresponds to the frequency of its reverse complement. In other words, the ratio of any codon frequency to the frequency of its reverse complement approaches 1. Also, down here, um, the software is counting the frequency of all codons where the first letter is T, the frequency of all codons where the second letter is T, and the frequency of all codons where the third letter is T. And it does the same for A, G and C. As you can see, uh, the current rate at which the uh, software is scanning the DNA is about 400,000 bases per second and the estimated completion time is 7 minutes. <coughs> In this final box here I've um, placed the frequencies in the same order that the codons are found in the genetic code table. This is quite convenient for later when we want to transpose the frequencies on directly onto the genetic code table to see what patterns appear. But as I said, already there is an apparent pattern, namely that the frequency of any codon is the same as the frequency of its reverse complement within the genetic code I have to stress that we're only counting from a single strand. DNA consists of two parallel strands. However, we're only counting from one strand. That's why this is an interesting result because just in the same way that opposing strands within DNA reflect one another, here we're seeing that within any one strand the frequency of codons 
reflects in the frequency of its reverse complement within the same strand. That's what makes this result so interesting. I'm going to cut short the video at this point and fast forward it to um, when the scan is complete. At this point, uh, you can see that the count has stopped, but the count for NNN, namely the unknown, unsequenced section of DNA, is carrying on. You see, in any chromosome, the um, quantity of unsequenced DNA can be quite high, uh, as much as 10%. So even though um, in the media, we're told that they've completed the sequencing of the human genome. This isn't actually true. Uh, about 10% of the genome is as yet unsequenced and represented in the uh, DNA by the letters NNN. Um, we just don't know as yet what's in hidden in those unsequenced sections which are quite large if anyone does know what's in those sections then please email me uh, immediately My email is uh, provided below.
Okay, it's finished scanning. Um, it counted uh, 249,774,000 bases um, and here we have the results. As you can see the ratio of any codon to its reverse complement always approximates to 1. So therefore we can conclude that there is a mathematical balance between the frequency of occurrence of any codon and its reverse complement. What's more, if we look at the frequency of all codons with the first letter T and compare it to the frequency of all codons with the second letter T and then the third letter T we can see that there is a balance here also and the same applies for the letter A, G and C.